Today I have four St. Patrick's Day DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The videos I am sharing today are from last year when my channel was new and small, so please excuse any mistakes in audio editing, etc. Welcome back y'all. We're going to use a variety of paints here. These all came from the thrift store. I have a white, a Christmas green, and a nutmeg brown. I'm going to use some little pans to put it in. I have a black recycled welcome sign and I've had this for several years and have not used it yet. So this is just, it came from the Target dollar spot many many years ago and has been just in my decor and I have used it naked and have not done anything with it so I think it's time to give it a little upgrade. I'm going to start off by moving my paint just a little bit into these little tins. I love these because they can either be washed out and used again or you can just throw them away when you're done. I'm going to start off with the top here and I'm going to paint that top section white. You can choose whatever colors that you like. You can use um, maybe a gold and a green and a white or you can use greens and browns. You can actually even take those sections if you don't want them that big and you want it to look more planked and you can separate those into two sections so you'll have more sections more lines to paint. These are just acrylic paints they are very easy to use. I think they can be bought at probably Walmart. If not, you know, you can get paints fairly cheap at any craft store. Watch for sales at Hobby Lobby. I think every two weeks they have some type of a sale or discount on their paints. My brush also came from Goodwill. I just cannot, for the life of me, pay full price for anything. I can't. Once you start going to Goodwill and Dollar Tree and seeing that you don't have to pay a lot of money for quality items, you just don't want to. It just will make you sick to have to pay retail for anything. I just, I can't stand it. I love to go and look at the stores, but I always think, you know what, I can do that. I can totally do that myself. Or I can totally, definitely find that at Goodwill the next time I go. I set my intention and almost every time I think that I want something, that I'm looking for something, I find it. It's wonderful. Okay, so you're going to use just one coat. It doesn't matter that it's streaky. We like it that way. This is rustic. So after it is definitely all the way dried, I'm going to take a heavier grit sandpaper and start roughing up my edges. You can see here it's chipping the paint off the edges and that's what I want chipping that off, giving it some age. Now, if you don't have one of these, and you likely don't if it's been several years, you can find a shamrock wooden farm anywhere. You can get them at Dollar Tree anytime during this season you can find them. So you can see there that I have buffed out paint on some of those areas, and that was the idea. And we are going to go section by section and do this. Now, I have moved on to using the finer grit sanding block. What you need to do if you're using a bunch of different colors of paint uh, to keep from having your paint muddy up the other areas with the colors that you're using, you want to choose which side or corner of the sanding block that you're using. Use one for green, one for brown, one for white, etc. So that that doesn't bleed onto the next one. trying to get in around the edges a little bit more than I am over the surface of it, you know, the top of it. You're just going to use your own preference here. You're going to just run the fine grit over it. You're going to run the rougher grit over it. You can run it down in those lines where the paint tends to, to seep, and that's fine if you want to do it that way. I am taking a little bit of that brown that I had left over. I've added water to it, and I'm using a baby wipe to kind of blot it off. And I'm going to run that over that top back and forth with this brush that came from the Dollar Tree. You can get a three pack. I'm 
This is going to kind of stain the areas that we took the paint off of and make it a little bit darker and give it a really nice aged look. So for the welcome sign, I didn't like the black. I'm going to go over it with some of this gold. This is Deco Art. It came from Hobby Lobby. It was on sale and it came in a pack of a bunch of different metallics, I think. You need to shake it up really well and then mix it really well with your brush because it has it kind of separates um, and this is a canvas over the top of the sign so I really doubted myself when I started on this as I was thinking Ew, this is not going to work but once I got that first layer on there and around all the cracks and crevices and let it dry the second coat went over much much better once it's dry you're going to take your hot glue and you're going to place it down on the plaque or the sign, whatever you want to call it. I wanted this to be across the broad section here, so I kind of centered it over that line and just pressed it down. So far, so good. I like the gold. I'm glad that I changed that from the black to the gold. Now, this green and white ribbon has no support, so when you try to make a bow out of it, it's going to be floppy. Well, to give it a little more rigidity, we're going to put this on top of this wired burlap ribbon that came from Dollar Tree. This is not an original idea. This has been done before. I have seen several crafters do this and it is a fantastic idea. So I do recommend it if you find a ribbon that you really really like that is not wired go ahead and use it. Just get you some Dollar Tree burlap ribbon as your backing or whatever type of wire ribbon that you want and just put it on there and it looks it looks great and it does the job perfectly I think. When you get that together, you're going to go ahead and decide which bow you're going to make. I'm going to make a real easy one for you here. Just folding it over, cutting it off, and we're going to glue that together. I'm loving my new glue gun. It has such a nice, precise tip. It's a sheer bonder. This is definitely not a sponsored video. I got it from Amazon. It's very affordable, and it came with several glue sticks, I think 12. So make your loop. Just set that aside, let the glue cool, and then you're going to make the tails for your bow. And this is so very simple. You can cut them at a slant. All I'm doing is trimming up the edge. You can cut them at a slant or whatever you want to do to make them look nice and finished. But always go to the center of the bow, pinch it, fold it over, tie it. Oh, by the way, that's a, a tattoo stamp on the back of my hand. That's not an injury. My daughter said I had to have it, so... That's why. And she likes to be the boss. So I'm going to let her be the boss. Then you're going to take that top of the bow, pinch it together, put it in there. I'm going to tie this in one knot in the front, flip it over, and then make two knots in the back. And then I will be trimming off that extra. And so here we go. Now we have the bow in its form. And this is where you can dovetail it, which is what I did. Or you can cut it at a slant, whichever one you like. And doesn't that look cute? Isn't that a great way to use just a, a floppy bow, an unwired piece of ribbon? Now it's, now it's good. It's perfect. It matches nicely. It looks farmhouse rustic. And it matches really good with the sign. So I'm going to take a couple of pieces of these clover, and I got these from Dollar Tree on a pick. I did a wreath where I used some of these, and you'll get to see that too if you watch the playlist. That had some extras, so I wanted to use them on here. You can put them at the top of the bow. I could have put them under the bow, or we can do what I ended up doing, which is just adding them underneath. I took them off the little picks there and I'm just putting a very thin amount of glue to hold those in place because they tend to kind of fold up on themselves and I want them to, to, to stay open like that. We're going to put a hanger on the back instead of putting those the original hanger back which you could do but you can't see it so it doesn't really matter. Just using some pipe cleaner, hot glue and a little scrap of the ribbon that I had left. And there we have it. There is our little rustic shamrock decor. Be sure to subscribe for more budget-friendly ideas. 
Be sure that you share this video. It really helps my channel. I'm going to start off with some supplies that I got from the thrift store. These are some cake pan liners or something of the sort that you make your cakes on. Then I have these already cut, perfectly sized pieces of fur, a little knob for the nose, and these hands and feet and the hat came off of a, just a paper piece, a decorative piece, and I pulled the arms and legs pieces off. So first I'm going to lay it out because I didn't have any inspiration for this. This came right out of my head. So I was trying to decide exactly how I wanted him to look. The positioning of his arms, did we want him waving, did we want him reaching out for a hug, how he wanted to do it. So now I'm just measuring with this hat how far down I want to put this on his body. And I'm going to do a little cutout here. Just tracing that with a pencil, going to go back with my scissors or rotary blade and just trim that out. I don't want this to be flimsy, so rather than using just, you know, construction paper or something like that, this cardboard is going to make a stronger base. I want this little leprechaun to last for a very long time. He's so cute. Okay, now that we've got the base of his body figured out, now we're going to trim out where I need to cut his beard. So I've just done that using that cardboard piece to trace it. You could use foam board if you don't have these uh, little cake stand, whatever these things are. And then I'm just wiping away the little hair that is coming off where I cut. And we're going to start gluing this down. I got a new glue gun. I left my other one on too long and it clogged up, so. Got a sure bonder. And I'm loving it so far. Okay, just cover that thing with glue and lay that down as well as you can. I didn't have it all the way to the edges, but I was surprised to see that the back of this fur is actually a little bit stretchy, so I was able to move that around just a little bit before the glue dried. Okay, so far, so good. Now we need to think about his hat. Okay, kind of flimsy though. Not gonna give us very much durability, so I'm going to just use another piece of, I think this piece actually came out of a calendar that I got from Dollar Tree, pretty sure it did. I save all that stuff because you never know when a project like this may come up. This way you don't have to run to the store and get anything. You can piece together what you need. So I've traced this and I'm cutting inside of that line to make it a little bit smaller. I don't want the cardboard poking out and then decided to just cut that bottom piece off because it's going to be supported by the body. So we don't really need that part. I'm going to add the glue and make sure that I put this on correctly. Pat it down so there's no bubbles in my hat on the other side. and eyeballing where we're gonna to need to put that glue before we put this down. I just don't wanna take a chance in getting too fast on this and getting sloppy and messing up his beard. Gingers have enough problems, I can say that because I am one. Okay, we want him to look dapper. This is gonna be, this is gonna be my Dapper Dan Leprechaun or Dapper Dawn, that's even better. Giving him a little trim there where his hair is poking out. And I'm liking the way this looks so far. I really like it. I think this is going to give me a good idea. Guys, I've never made a gnome of any sort. This is my very first time. All right, so we're going to use little popsicle sticks for his, to support his hands and to attach his, um, I guess to make him a little arm to attach to his body. You could also attach this straight to the cardboard underneath, but again, it's going to be kind of floppy and I want this to be secure, nice and sturdy. So he's going to be coming in for a hug. That's where we're going to put his arms down a little bit more on his sides. Maybe he's dancing. We don't know. He's a leprechaun. He might really be liking this music. 
My daughter said it sounded like leprechaun music, so I decided to put it on this video. So that's for my little girl. I've already got one boot on. Now we're going to put the other one on. And because he's going to be hanging, I'm just going to leave those boots attached right there with no extra support. It's the bottom of his body. Shouldn't get much, much uh, disturbance down there. Okay, we want to make sure that we pick all of his fuzzies out of his beard. We want a clean beard. And watch how I make this mustache. How simple is this? Just going to take your fingers right in the center of his little face there. And just start brushing or sweeping that to the side. How simple is that? I didn't even need to get a second layer out, another sheet. This is perfect. I love it. He needs a little uh, handlebar mustache. See, he's dapper. Now I'm going to use this Elmer's glue stick as like a hair gel and I'm going to fix his little mustache. I think men who have mustaches use like a wax of some sort. So this is going to be his mustache wax. Now we're going to put his nose on right in the center of that little mustache. Above into the center so that it's right next to that hat. Looks like it's poking out from under the hat. Oh my gosh, guys, look at that. Ah! So cute. I couldn't stop playing with his mustache. We're going to do the same thing for the beard because we want him to look nice instead of unkempt. So there we go. Now his little beard is all in shape. We're going to start working with a little bit of extra embellishment on his hat. So I'm going to take some of this wired burlap ribbon. You can do a very simple bow here if you want, just like this. You can put it right over that buckle or on the top if you would like. Simple, simple. But I felt like he needs a little bit of something extra. So I'm going to give him a funky bow. And this is how you make a funky bow. You just make a loop. Pinch it in the middle. I think I have um, like a foot and a half of each piece of this ribbon. Just as long as you've got them the same length, that's kind of what you're aiming for. So that your bow and the little tails that stick out are going to be about the same length. And you'll see what I mean once we start fluffing a bow out. But for now, let's get this all trimmed up. I'm cutting these at a little slant. You can do dovetails or anything that you like here. I'm going to do the same thing with the green burlap ribbon and both of these ribbons came from Dollar Tree. Pinch it in the middle and I'm just using a clip to hold it there in place. Now there's no wire in this ribbon and it came from the thrift store but I'm going to show you how to make it a little more sturdy because you see how floppy that is? If you tried to put that in that arrangement and you tried to fluff your bow it would just lay flat. It wouldn't give you any type of body whatsoever. See? These have defined loops. You can see how they stand apart. But when you look at this, not so much. All you have to do is cut another piece of ribbon that does have wire, like burlap ribbon, and that's going to be the backing for this. It gives it a nice look also. Just run your glue down it, be very careful. I should have had my finger protectors on, but didn't. Then you want to lay this down where you have even amounts on the sides. So, you know, just so that it looks like it was made that way. Nice and neat. I'm just trimming those off at an angle. And look at that, a nice structured piece to add to that bundle of bows. Well, bundle of ribbons. So we're going to just alternate. It really doesn't matter. You don't have to do this, but when you're fluffing it out, it just kind of spaces things apart just a little bit. And I find that helpful. So you're gonna use one of each, two burlap, two green burlap, and two of the clover. And then you're just gonna take a zip tie or a piece of pipe cleaner or some floral wire and cinch the middle. For the bigger, bulkier things, I like to use these zip ties because it really holds it in there for you. Especially if you have small hands, this seems to be um, more helpful. Snip off the end because we're not going to need that piece for anything. Then squash your bow down 
I'm going to sit it down, spread out the tails, and then start fluffing around the bow, and then you'll see. It always looks pretty rough in the beginning, but once you start moving things around and spacing them out, they really start to take a really pretty shape. So don't give up when you first start to make your bow and you think it looks crazy. It, it does get better. I'm just trimming off some pieces that I that looked a little rough on the edges and you can trim them off if you want things to look a little bit shorter, whichever way that you like. See, it's gonna be cute up there on his hat. And I decided I wanna cover up his buckle so that it matches his bow on his head. And I'm gonna do the same thing for that last piece of ribbon. I'm just gonna secure it with a piece of wired ribbon underneath and it matches nicely. It's coordinated. I feel like Dapper Don the Leprechaun appreciates a put together outfit. And so that's going to go right over that buckle. And we're going to place the bow where we think we might want it. Once you've eyeballed it and moved it around, go ahead and add a good bit of glue there and put it down on his hat where you would like for it to be. Then if it's not exactly how you wanted it, just keep fluffing. You can move all of that stuff around. It's the beauty of it. Big bows. I want to add a little something extra on the side here. So I've just taken this piece of garland that I've had for a few years. I think it came from the Target dollar spot. And since I didn't use it, didn't match what I normally use, I decided that it would be perfect for this little leprechaun gnome. I just added some glue and put it on the side of that bow there. It looks cute. Now I'm going to work on his little boots. Could have used the bright green pom-poms, but I switched over to the dark green. And now I wish I would have used the light green because these barely show up. But that's okay. That's all right. Just gonna glue those down. And I had these two little, I guess the little felt flowers from another little kit that I had. And I'm just gonna glue those on. I think they look nice to balance out that uh, clover on the other side. Now we gotta find some way to hang it up. So we're gonna put some glue here. And this just is just a bag handle that I already had. We're gonna recycle it and use it here. And a piece of ribbon to put over the top. You put your glue down, put your rib, your well, your string there. Add a little more glue on top of that. And then put the ribbon on top. Give your bow one last fluff. And here he is in all of his glory. Cutest little gnome leprechaun I've ever seen in my life. He's really cute. He makes me smile when I see him, so he is going to be around my house for a very long time. Maybe even past St. Patrick's Day. He's really cute. Alright, you're going to start off with some type of a little leprechaun or a 3D little figurine to put on here. You're going to need some burlap mesh. And then I'm using a variety of, I think that's 10 inch mesh. I'm using two greens and a gold. And then there are some little clovers here that came from Dollar Tree. This came from the thrift store. And then this came from the thrift store as well. I took it apart. It looked like a rainbow, kind of reminded me of that. So I decided to use that. It is about 12 inches across. Feel free to use any type of a wooden wreath that you like. I'm going to be cutting these in 8 inch strips. There is a tape measure at the bottom of my screen. So that's how I'm getting my measurements. And you're just going to do this about 10 times. This one's kind of shaggy on the end so I'm going to fix it. All this mesh came from Goodwill. I was so lucky to find it. Okay, same thing here same measurements so we'll have two of the light green two of the dark green and then we'll move on to doing two of the gold just showing you two of them you're going to do about 10 of them and you may need to do more and you might need a little bit less depending on the size of your wreath 10 inch 
round wreath is probably going to take a little bit less. You can do eight inches here or you could do 10 inches, whatever you like. This is a long roll and it looks like somebody's leftovers actually, but I'm going to use this to make the bottom part. And this is four inches that I'm cutting here, straight up. It's gonna roll back on itself, which is fine. You're gonna fold it over and cut it in the middle. This is, I think, 24 inches. Also came from Goodwill. So there's a bundle of those. And I'll show you what we're gonna do with them. I want this wreath to be rustic and shaggy looking, so we're gonna put our rough ends out instead of the smooth ends. So they were rolling that up kind of sloppy, so it looks kind of, kind of rustic and worn. Do a bunch of these. You can use a clip or a clamp to hold those together if you would like. Sometimes they'll just stay rolled up on their own, so it's up to you how you wanna do that. All right, so there is our first base bundle. I'm gonna take a pipe cleaner. You can use floor wire if you'd like. You could even use a piece of, um, of jute cord if you wanted to and just tie it on there. We're gonna continue this process across the bottom. And if you were using a round wreath instead, then just the bottom half or the bottom maybe third you could do this way. I'm going to start in the corners so I know how many that I want of these. You could just cut as you go along because I can't give you precise measurements if I, you know, depending on the wreath that you use. So I ended up with one, two, three, four, five on the bottom. Five of the burlap little bundles. Now we're going to move on to the green and gold. Just gonna roll those up with the rough ends out. Now I gotta tell you, when you leave the rough ends out like this, if you don't have a good quality mesh or, you know, um, I don't know, it just may be all mesh in general, it's gonna come apart a little bit. It's gonna kind of fray and come apart on the ends, which is a good thing and a bad thing. A blessing and a curse. So you can just trim that up later once you get your wreath together and see what you need to do and um, kind of pull the little loosey-gooseys out of there or trim them off, whichever way. So here's the bundle. I wanted the dark one in the middle and the two light ones on the outside. Do yours however you like. You could probably use a solid color here too, but I wanted this to match closely to my little leprechaun. So use your pipe cleaners as we did before and start attaching these. I am going with the bundles all in one direction, so if I follow the arch, it starts off with the gold on top, and as I come around the arch, the gold section is on the bottom. So I'm just kind of, that's my pattern, but you certainly don't have to do that at all. So here we are all fluffed out, and I left this section open so that I can make a big curvy bow. This bow is not going to have any tails. I've just taken 10 inch pieces in two of each color, let them go around in a circle in the way that the trimmed edges are on the outside this time, so that it's very neat looking. Wrap the center with some wire and then attach it to your frame. You can see some remnants of glue that were on there from the previous crafter. And I love, I love the way this looks. I love the swirl and the curve of it. It just looks really cute to me. Okay, so now we need to fix our little leprechaun man in his pot of gold. We need to fix him to the frame and I'm gonna put him, well, the wreath, I'm gonna put him on the bottom here. I just slid those over because they're not glued down. You can do that. And I'm just gonna firmly attach him to the bottom of this wreath. Trimming off my excess. Now for the first option, you can start adding your clovers if you would like. Put those in there with a little dot of hot glue, see where you want them to go. And I thought he would look cute, just kind of nested in the clover, like he's hiding 
Maybe he's happy that he's hidden his pot of gold from everybody. I love how the burlap, that natural burlap, goes with the clover here and with the, the sparkle from the green. It just looks springy to me. So you just want to tuck your little bundles off of that. This is only one pick and I didn't even use the whole thing. And they have little gold sparkles on them. They're really cute. I guess I said cute a thousand times already. Okay, so that's gonna be like your first option here for the bottom of it. Just surrounding him, having him peeking out of all the clover. If you wanted to do a different type of greenery, you can, certainly. Whatever you have laying around the house if you're not getting out. You could also use little flowers. That would be pretty. Little white flowers like a clover flower. I'm going to go back in and cover up these pipe cleaners, which are white. I didn't have any green, so now I've got to cover those. And I'm just using some pom-poms I had left over for an from another project, which you will see soon. It's going to be a pom-pom wreath. That'll be coming up, so look for it. Be sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. The gold coins also came from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack. I bought them for my kids so they could play treasure hunt. They like to hide things from each other and then go find them. So that's fun. They're seven and eight. But I only took three, so maybe they won't notice, right? We'll see. Stay tuned. Okay. So the leprechaun has lost a few pieces of his gold coins. And see the mess, this is what I'm talking about. You'll have to kind of pull some of those out or trim them down, whichever way you want. And if you don't like that rough edge, then just fold your um, fold them in where you have the rough edges on the inside and the finished edges on the outside, like the bow that's there. Whichever way you want to do it. And that will complete the first look. And we'll move on to the next one. What do you think about this? It's pretty cute. Okay, so now I've just gone back and removed the clovers and I have removed the gold coins and I've taken that 3D uh, shamrock and cut that apart with my wire cutters and just placed those down. So I put the big one above right here on the big bow The smallest center one is there on the outside on the right, and then the middle one is right there on the left. I think I like this one better. I thought I would like the clover better, but I think this one is going to be my favorite. I'm going to leave it just like this and put it on my door. Which is your favorite? Which one do you prefer? going to start off with a foam wreath from Dollar Tree and then any type of green pom-poms you want and a variety of green ribbon. This part of the process will go mm, kind of fast, kind of slow. When you watch me do it, it seems like it takes forever, but honestly, if you've got some music going and you're in a good mood and you're in good company, this won't take very much time. I'm going to start off by just making a couple of little groups here. I'm going to make sections of four on my wreath. I'm just going to take the biggest pom-poms that I have. and You can do this any way that you would like. Um, you can just do all of one size, but I wanted to do a variety of sizes. And I only had three of the, um, like the tinsel type pom-poms, so I used a solid one in one section. But it's going to be covered with bow, so you won't really notice it. Did you just go ahead and alternate colors if you have a variety of colors and a variety of sizes. You're going to fit them in where you can get them in and make sure that you don't have any holes left over. Now the good thing about having this green foam wreath is that if there are a couple of spots where it's not filled in, it's not as noticeable as say a white wreath would be. You would see those spots, but you're not going to see it as much here. You could possibly paint this a darker color. If you were using all of the dark green pom-poms, then you could probably just paint this a dark green color. 
There are some things that you can use with spray paint that I have heard of. I have a can that I have not used yet, but it's for styrofoam, and it's supposed to protect the styrofoam so that it doesn't um, kind of melt or warp when you use it, because I know that spray paint will do that sometimes with different types of styrofoam, so it's supposed to prevent that. You might consider something like that. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here. I am I'm using a variety of colors, the textures, and the sizes. This is going to give it a lot of visual interest. It's not going to be the same thing over and over again. So it gives your eye um, lots of places to wander over. And it just gives it, I like, visual interest. I think that because it's a pom-pom wreath, it would probably be best on an interior wall or door rather than putting out an elements because I bet the spiders would have a blast in this wreath. So just hold your wreath up from time to time and look around for spots that need to be filled in and certainly you want to fill in on the inside and on the outer edge of the wreath so that in all directions, if it was hanging on a flat wall, it would be covered. Now, while you watch me do this, I want to take the opportunity to thank my subscribers again. And to mention something interesting, I was looking at the data for my channel, and 68% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel. So if you are not subscribed to my channel, but you do watch my videos and you want to know every time there's a new video, then be sure that you hit the little subscribe bell. When you do that, it's going to give you an option. It's going to give you the option of three different little bells. You want to click the top one that's in quotation marks. That's going to show every video. If you go underneath and click on the one that says personalized, that's only going to show you things that YouTube thinks you might want to watch. So you're going to be missing some things. So be sure that when you subscribe that you are doing that. And I will appreciate you just forever and forever. I'd really like to have a thousand subscribers you know, by the summer, that's kind of a goal that I want, um, kind of a soft goal. And I think we can get there. We have, and I say we because I consider you guys my YouTube family, we have 453 subscribers as of today on the 23rd of February. So hopefully we can add, we can double that and get on up there, you know, pretty soon. I'd like to do some special things when I reach a thousand subscribers. Um, to give back to the community, to give back to my YouTube family. So if you know anybody who would like these videos, who like to do projects on a budget, then please share these videos, any one that you like, um, or the playlist on your social media. You can put it on Pinterest, you can put it on Facebook, and you can send it in a message if you want to send it in a message. So. Um, yeah, that would be great, and I would really appreciate it. Because I'm feeling in the St. Patrick's Day spirit here in this video, and I feel lucky. I feel lucky, and I feel blessed to have you all. I love the conversations that we have. I love all the kindness um, in the comment section. It's been a positive experience for me, and I hope that it is for you as well. So you can see here how I'm just kind of picking it up and just adding here and there. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. I'm not going for a perfect symmetrical look. I'm just filling in here and there. And then there are some spots when I go back around that look like they could use a little something extra. So don't be afraid to put two small ones side by side or, you know, stack them up, whatever you want to do there. I'm also in a minute going to show you two different ways that you can um, use this wreath. So be sure you go back and pull off any of the little spider webs that are left over from the glue. So there we go. I've got the dark one on top. And I'm going to show you how to make a simple hanger. So this is burlap. 
uh, wired ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree and it came from the crafter section. You can use it by itself. You can use it layered like I've shown in other videos that I have done. Or you can make a bow with it. But to do it in a very simple way, if you want to stop at this point, would be to just take that ribbon, cut a section off of it, and make a simple loop up there on the top. You would just cut that off, fold it under, hot glue it, and then it's ready to hang. So that is your first option. Next choice would be to make a bow. So I'm just going to show you here how I'm going to do that. So I'm making a 12 inch tail. There's a black ruler at the edge of my table is what you've seen me use there. And I'm going to make some loops. So I noticed when I was using this ribbon that there is actually, and they're five inch loops, that there's actually wire that you can see on one side and you can't see it on the other one. So I'm trying to twist it in the middle like you would with a pattern ribbon. See there, I've noticed it. Now I'm twisting it and putting another five inch loop on top of that and twisting it because I want that wire to be on the inside of the loop so that you don't see it. So twisting it again and folding it over and you just do this all in my hand. You can use this to make the same bow on a bow maker if you have made one. And of course I have a video where I can show you exactly how to make a bow, make, a bow maker tool. And I will link that or it will be in the card at the end of the video. And you can make the same type of bow on the bow maker. But I challenged myself to do it without it and I think it did pretty good. What do you think? So to hold the middle, you're going to take either a pipe cleaner or chenille stem, whichever one you want to call it, or you can use some floor wire here, and you're just going to twist it around the middle. Next, I'm going to use this ribbon, and this ribbon, believe it or not, does have a wire in it. But it is just a, like a lime green color with a teal green polka dot. Now somewhere between a teal and a hunter's green because it looked really nice beside the darkest pom-pom that was on the um, on the wreath. So I want to keep the top up there because I want to have the pattern on the outside so you get a twist to do that. And I cut through my mat there. Sure did. Good thing it came from Dollar Tree in a two-pack, right? Didn't hurt too much. Alright, I'm going to stack this on top bring my wire from behind, pull it to the front, and then just twist it. Now I've got these two held very tightly together. I was squeezing them tightly before I twisted them. And then this will give you an idea of what your bow is going to look like. Pretty little simple bow, and it kind of reminds me of a four-leaf clover, so I think it's appropriate and fitting. And we're going to put it right up there at the top. Now, feel free to use hot glue if you want to at this point, but I want mine to stay on a little bit better without the mess. So I'm going to use a little bit of wire. And you'll see how I do that. I've got about six inches here. And I'm just going to red it through behind that pipe cleaner. Just like that. Watch your fingers. You can use your little finger protectors there if you want to so you don't poke yourself. Give it a twist and I'm going to fix it right to the top. Pull it around the back and give it a good tight squeeze and twist. Then you're just going to take your extras and fold them up there. And now I have a little loop hanger just like that. Definitely at this point, go ahead and fluff that bow back out. I fluff my bows a lot. Initially, I fluff them to make sure that they are the look that I want. Then I fluff them when I put them on to make sure that I have the placement correct. And then after I've made 
any adjustments on the back side, of course, I have to flip it back over and fluff it out again. But I don't mind it. I enjoy this part. So, options here for your bow. You can make a loop here and then hot glue it in the center if you'd like. Or you can use a pom-pom in the center. And this is what I'm going to do. Some other options are some gold coins. Any type of little you could even use a little clover there if you had a little plastic clover or a flower or maybe some of those little um, floral picks from Dollar Tree would be good too but I wanted to continue with the pom-pom theme so I'm just taking another one of these little pom-poms and putting that down right in the center I could have used a green pipe cleaner if I had one and I wouldn't have had to do anything but that's not how I like it I wanted to do it like this and I think it's cute that way but you can do yours however you like there's no wrong way of doing it. As long as it makes you happy, then you do it your way. So I'm just dovetailing the ends of my ribbons and I want these, this lime green to be a little bit shorter than the um, burlap that's on the bottom. So I'm just gonna cut it a little bit shorter. And because they're wired, I can take those, put them between my fingers and then pull them down and it will flip those under. When you flip those ribbons under, they naturally will curve or hug around the edge of your little wreath there. And it just looks, it looks cute. It's a festive St. Patrick's Day pom-pom wreath. What do you think? I love it. I think it is adorable. I could play with these bows and ribbons all day long. Love wired ribbon. So thank you for tolerating my chattiness. If you're still still here right now after all of that talking, I really do appreciate you. I thank you so much and I'm so glad to see that there are other people who are interested in the things that I'm interested in to the point that they support me and they watch my videos and they comment and that means a lot to me. So you guys do mean a lot to me and I appreciate it very much. I believe this is my last St. Patrick's Day project, so I will be back into spring projects very soon, probably Friday. So be sure that you come back for more. Remember, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, new videos. Thank you so, so very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!